Okay, big thanks to Huber Engineered Woods, the makers of Advantech Subfloor and the Advantech Subfloor Adhesive for sponsoring this video. You guys know we're huge fans of the products. But in today's video, I didn't want to talk about subfloor, but instead fastening subfloor. So what you see here is a whole variety of different ways of fastening subfloor. Auto feed stand-up screw gun, very specially designed nail and nail gun to go with it. And then of course, standard ring shank nails. So I want to go through a little bit of my history and then get into this and why we've made the decision that we've made. So first of all, we work for the general contractor. It's the company my dad started when I was about six months old, way back in 1978. The reason I mention that is because we're on the hook for squeaks. Even if it's a year, two years down the road, a lot of times for good customers, we're going to come back and fix those squeaks. So let's not have squeaks, right? Starting in the mid 90s, we bought the very first version of the quick drive and it was my job to go after school, spend a couple hours on the job right before hardwood carpet tile went in and refasten the subfloor. That has worked very well for us for a couple decades. The last couple years though, because these guns went cordless, we started to do this. We started to fasten with screws as we laid subfloor. We were just a two person crew. And so just the efficiency that worked out about as fast as the subfloor got glued and laid, the guy who was screwing down the uh, subfloor, he could keep up. So by the time we were done with the floor, it was a wash whether we nailed or whether we screwed. It all just uh, had to do with our rhythm. That's for us as a crew. Now we're a three person crew. And so we decided on this floor to demonstrate two of the auto feed screw guns stand up. This is a relatively new product. And so I reached out to Passload and they gave me the gun to use. However, we did buy the fasteners. And I'm gonna get into that in a moment. And then of course, we use the max high pressure system. We frame with coil nails. And so for us, just to get a different size nail is nothing. So let me just go through very quickly the cost for this. So whatever coil gun you use, standard pressure or high pressure, it's the cost of that gun. These guns run about 600 bucks. I don't even know what the standard coil framing nailers are right now, but you can look that up online. This box of 6,000 nails costs $70. That works out to be about a penny per fastener. It's a ring shank nail. The coating heats up and helps to bond the nail to the wood. That friction as the nail goes in activates that glue. The idea is it's not going to not going to work its way out and cause a squeak. This is by far the fastest system for us. These guns are very fast. Nailing off with coils is fast. This is about 250 nails per coil, so we don't have to reload very often. Now the Tetra Grip, this is about a $400 gun between 300, like 340 online and 400 bucks. It includes the hose. It's a larger hose and it's a larger air inlet. Run your compressor at 120 PSI. It needs it to drive this nail. The nail is specially designed to screw in as it goes. And it has the bigger head. It's got a glue on it that helps to anchor that uh, subfloor down. The idea is, is that this nail is set. It's not working its way back up and the subfloor doesn't move around the nail, therefore no squeak. We found this to be just a little slower than this. Uh, it was a little temperamental as far as the bounce firing, but still faster than screwing down your floor. Uh, this was $195 for the box of 2160. That's about nine cents per fastener, plus the about $400 for the tool. But again, there's nothing more expensive than callbacks. Now, as I mentioned, I started to use the quick drive way back in the mid 90s. It had a lot of problems. Those problems have since been addressed. Simpson Strong Tie owns this system now and they've made a number of changes. So first of all, the cordless system is awesome. No dragging of a cord or a hose through glue, getting stuck on things. Where, where you go, this goes with nothing dragging behind you. This system is about $600, not cheap. But you gotta think about what's the cost of callbacks or the damage to your reputation if you get lots of squeaks. $600 for the cordless version. This is a number nine code listed screw. Here's what that means. Some engineers, depending on where you're at, they might call out a certain size nail for your floor because they need it for the floor diaphragm. You could substitute this for that. Just talk to your engineer. What's the advantage? The advantage is I don't have to bend over. And when you get into a rhythm with these, you'll find that you might be like a row behind the guys as they're laying subfloor. 
and by the time they get done trimming the floor, you're gonna be caught up to them, but you didn't have to bend over. Let the gun do the work, just kind of bounce, get into a rhythm with it. Great, great system. This is about nine cents per fastener. That box is $90 for a thousand, so about nine cents. If I did my arithmetic correctly, now we've been using the PamFast for a few years. In the last two years, we had the cordless version, which is amazing. Oh, by the way, the quick drive version comes with two six amp hour batteries. We just put the flex bolt on there so that we don't have to swap batteries pretty much at all. I go through about two batteries for this system. Great system, very, very fast. Great system, super fast, loads nice and easily. Then the outtakes. Super fast system, loads really easily. Don't leave the screws out to get rusty, by the way, because it clogs that. This is about $500 for the cordless option, as best I could see online. And then the screws work out to be it's $48 for that box, so it's about five cents per screw. Now there's a couple things that all of these tools have in common. You can adjust the depth of drive on all of them. It's a little dial on the quick drive. On the Fasten Master, you can adjust the nose piece, as well as there's an adjustment here. And then of course the nail guns have the dial type adjustment on their nose, so that keeps them all about the same. There's nothing worse, especially if you're scraping snow, than to have a bunch of proud fasteners. <laughs> snow shovel or scraper hits that. Okay, so where have we landed as a crew? If it was up to me, I would be using one of these two systems. Probably this one because it's got the code listed screw and we're in a seismic zone. The reason why I would pick this is because I'm 43 and I'm sick of bending over. I'm pretty fast with this. I can just sit there and walk, switch hands, not a big deal. I'm cordless, so I'm not dragging a hose. But I've got two younger guys who would rather nail. So guess what? If they get to nail their floors, I'll pack the sheets, I'll do the gluing. I'd rather do that than bend over. This is cheaper on the front end. This is faster since we're coming back anyway for us as a crew go fast to begin with and then I'm going to pick the quick quick drive because I just prefer the strips of screws a little bit better than the floppy ones I find that I just tend to step on these both are an awesome awesome setup uh, this is just code listed so I have that in my back pocket probably not a big deal for me since we've already fastened it but whatever so we're gonna nail first screw down at the end because this is not optional for us later the Tetra Grip is a super cool system. If I was one and done, I would probably go with this. It's nine cents per fastener. This is nine cents per fastener. It's kind of a wash. It's a little cheaper to buy the gun than the screw gun. And I'm running pneumatic anyway, so if I can go a little faster and not come back. The technology behind this fastener is impressive. I'll show you in just a moment. If I put a mark on this and I keep pounding the nail, you can see it twist down. Pretty impressive. So that's where we're at as a crew. It's not really for me to say what you should or shouldn't do, just weigh the pros and cons. If you get good with these, you'll find you're about as efficient as nailing off a floor, but if you're required to use a certain size nail, it is what it is, right? Not much we can do to change it. So thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. I'll do my best to answer them.